Hey there, viewers. Welcome back to the Self Made Auto Channel. That's a 2015 Chevrolet. It's got the big one for it. It's a cruise. It's the LT. And it's got some oil leaks and some coolant leaks. Uh, so these engines are pretty notorious for PPN all over the ground. And uh, it's leaking coolant out of the uh, left side water outlet housing there. It's all plastics. We got a new one of them from Chevrolet. Uh, it's peeing oil out of the valve cover. Uh, the variable timing, variable uh, the VTEC solenoids or the variable cam timing, cam actuator solenoids are on the end of the uh, head. Uh, it's leaking oil out of the turbo. It's leaking oil out of the oil pan. Somebody stripped out the drain plug in it. We're going to do some preventative measures too. So instead of doing just the valve cover gasket, guy elected to do the whole valve cover because it's uh, pretty notorious for that PCV built into the valve cover to fail. So we're going to be changing that. The PCV tube. We're gonna put the cam timing solenoids in it instead of just the O-rings. And then we're gonna replace the oil pan instead of you know just drilling it and tapping it and putting a helicoil in it uh, to, you know, to try to have a more proper repair. Now the turbo on it is PP and oil. Also, not as bad and he elected to wait for that to completely fail, which you know inevitably it will. You get the dreaded P0299 on these with the turbo under boost code. And, um, and I think that's it. That'll get us started. So let's get motor in. First thing first, we'll remove this drain plug. It looks like it's one of those Strippo plugs. Ooh, she's not very tight. You know, that they put in at the uh, express lube when they strip out the drain plugs. Uh, the thing is though, it's going in all cattywampus. So you probably can't tell in the video here, but it's in all cockeyed. So we're just gonna take get rid of this thing I don't know if you guys ever seen these or not you probably have if you if you work in a shop you've seen them and, and you cringe when you see one so these have kind of a tapered thread and they've got a couple little reliefs so when you start putting them in the aluminum it just kind of you just kind of make your own threads they're kind of a one-time use throwaway type deal gets the guy out of the jiffy lube or out of your bay and then you know you fix it at a later date or however it works out for you I suppose so we have to remove the converter to get the pan off I don't you might be able to sneak it out but these converters aren't horrible to remove so we're just going to do it we've got the uh, auction sensor here I think it's an auction sensor in this car yeah it looks like an O2 sensor not an AFR We've got the band clamp here. I'm gonna take this heat shield off. This thing's still a little bit toasty. The girl just dropped it off not too long ago. Uh, we're gonna get that off so we can get a little panther pee on the clamp if we have to heat it up. And then we're gonna to try to drop the whole exhaust as in one piece, I think you can on these. That way we don't have to fiddle with gaskets and crap underneath. Let me get some torques, inverted torques. big turbo now the bolt for this uh, V clamp is down here at the bottom we'll get uh, a wrench or a uh, socket that's going to fit that rather those you got to be kind of careful with they'll uh, they'll snap off on you pretty easy and then we're going to get this connector on the O2 sensor I have kind of a funny connector. You have to, well, it's not funny. Not like ha ha funny, but you have to slide up on the little slide there. And then to get it out from the bracket, it has these two little tabs on each side that I reach through with the pick. And this we're not gonna reinstall until we change this uh, water housing because that's what it clicked into. So we'll leave that out. We'll just snake the wire down and around here. Sweet baby, that one was actually not bad. Some of them, boy, they get really bound up on there. Can't get that up here. Spoke too soon, fella. Yes, spoke too soon. All right, let's get it broke loose there. Jiggle this around. Still a little pussy. Okay. Did not buy a new clamp. Foolishly, uh, I'm gonna spray a little panther pee on here, and 
see if we can't get that to work loose because we've got to be able to get this clamp to open up just a whisker more. Oh, running out, running out. That's enough. The bolt came out, hopefully the threads in the bottom of that are still good. If not, we'll have to order a new one from Chevrolet for tomorrow. Now we'll find out. Yeah, sometimes the stainless steel stuff on the uh, exhaust systems can be a real pain in the neck. Uh, we might have to give that a little thunk, one of those, to get that to crack loose. And then we'll go underneath and uh, pop the rest of the exhaust off. Like it's missing a couple, uh, couple of these plastic push tabs, uh, just for this little splash guard here. Sweet. So that's just the bracket off the side of the cat here. I think there's one more on these cars, isn't there? Yeah. There's one that's up behind this converter. Um, well, not behind it, but just a little bit more of a pisser to get to. I think that's the only one or the only other one, rather. Fortunately, the uh, uh, oil cooler, see the oil cooler up here behind the turbo, that leaks oil also, which, uh, when I talk to the customer, when the turbo blows, that's when they're gonna do the turbo and the uh, oil cooler. You'll see that once we get the cat out of here. So we're going to crack the exhaust loose here. Now this holds the hangers for this midsection of pipe and even though the exhaust in this car is in pretty good shape uh, for New York, we don't want to mess with these connections, uh, you know, here or up front or the flex pipe. So I'm hoping that if we release these, got to get a smaller one there. My hope is once we release these that will allow us to move the system enough to get it unhooked and then just let it down. We'll support it. And so we can do the pan and then just put it back up, be the least invasive way. It's gonna leave one of them in there kind of light for right now. We gotta clear this bracket. Um, typically you unhook them right here at the bottom of the flange. We might ultimately have to, but boy, if I don't have to touch those bolts, that would make me happy. Baby. Let's see if I can get up here with the T40. If, if this bolt will come out easy, that holds the bracket on. Then we'll be in good shape. There's two of them. The one on the other side came loose pretty easy and it feels like I can spin it out with my fingers. Cause then we'll just take the whole bracket with it and I think we'll be okay. Let's see if we can... Yeah, there we go. Just gotta be careful here a little bit. There we go, caught the bolt, look at that. And then, 
We'll take the other one out. I'm gonna need a little extension. We'll take the hole. Are you, can you guys see up here where we're at? A little bit. Hard to see behind there, but you just have to trust me. Oops. Take the other bolt out. Right on the floor. And then the bracket here should be loose. Now, the oil return pipe for the turbo goes over this bracket and it's plastic. So don't let this just, when you take the bolt out, don't let that come down and bust that ear off. They're very, very chintzy where that holds it all together. So uh, be mindful of that. Um, now we need to unhook the rear O2 and then we can let the whole exhaust down. I just kind of want to see how it hangs, folks, because uh, we don't necessarily need to take it all the way out. We just need access to the pan, which we have now. So technically, if this is supported, we're not stressing out the flex joint, I think we're going to be okay. And then we don't need anybody to help us. So this does loop up over the rear axle. A lot of times with exhaust systems, you know, if they're under the axle, or they're over it, depending on where the muffler is, you can take it all out in one piece. This one, I think we're gonna be okay leaving it like this. Um, if I don't feel comfortable with that, we can also tip it to the side and just rest it on a, uh, you know, a muffler stand. Or if you're doing this on the ground, you can just bring it down, you know, if the car's jacked up, set this right on the ground. Just be careful of this flex pipe. Don't let this converter just dangle off that flex pipe. We gotta get our wires to that front O2 sensor. Well, that's stuck. Let me uh, reach up there and get that. Reposition there where it can hang. Come on, baby! There she goes. So, what I should have done is I should have got the stand. Now we gotta yell. It misses all! Big emergency. And you need me. Lack of planning. Over there on the shelf there, young lady at the very top, you grab one of them uh, green uh, straps for us, please. Oh, wow. Okay, so what we need to do, hopefully everybody can see what we're going to come up and over the frame right here. Not really. <laughs> Stupid plastic. We're going to come up over this front engine mount right here. Bring it around town. This is really piss poor planning on my part. Okay, keep her going. Where's it going? All the way to the, we're going all the way. And, boy how we got her. Um, actually we need to pick that up just a little bit more there. You, you yeah, just hold the, uh, hold the exhaust here if you wouldn't mind. It's not hot, right? It's not hot. I would have told you if it was hot, you know. Mm. You yeah. said hold on real tight? Yeah, I would have said hold on tight, it's slippery. Uh -huh. Now what? That's it, old girl. We just needed to, and then we can kind of give it a little extra support with this. Twist this around. Oh, you're not a sailor, are you? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> well, that ship is sailing. I'm not a sailor. There, look at that. Well, that's it. That's it, baby. That's all I needed you for. And, that's all you need me for. And one other thing. One other thing. A couple other things. Wow. You're embarrassing me. Come on. <laughs> you're embarrassing me. So what's up? We haven't seen you in a while. I mean, I have. I see you every day. I wake up next to you. It's amazing. <laughs> um, I'm going to stay tonight. It's a little late. All night? All night long, baby. You know me. What time is it? Six o'clock. Oh, six o'clock. Are you making dinner? At home. Oh, I'll eat it at home. <laughs> so we're going to take out the bolts from the pan to the bell housing here. There's another one up top here. We don't, it doesn't go through the pan, but it goes on this 
little tin bracket there. We're gonna take it off also. Get out of there. Oh, it's a bigger size. It must be an actual bell housing bolt. It must be like an 18. Oh, there it was. It wasn't very tight at all. That should release this. Like I say, it's just a little tin bracket goes by the CV shaft here. Covers up that bit of the flywheel that's in there. Crank sensors right there. And then we have all these inverted torques. I don't think we have to pull the uh, harmonic balancer, but we're gonna take a look. Let me get an inverted torque socket. And we'll at least take all them out. I imagine the pan is gonna be glued on there pretty good. The ultra gray silicone, man, that's some wicked stuff. So this is an e, uh, E10. All the bolts are out front side, on the front, the sides. And in the back, you know what, I think there's a couple. I think that has burned me in the past. I think there's a couple up through here. Ah, there is. So before you go flacking away at it, uh, let me get a magnet. There, now I believe all of the bolts are out of it. So we can start trying on it. Let's get up here where there's a gap. Hopefully, hopefully it wants to play nice. Oh, look at that. She wants to play nice. So that's the front half. The magnet broke off the bottom of my light, so it's not near as handy as it was. There we go. Well, look at that. That's not too bad, folks. Not too bad at all. So there she is. She's off. Not a lot of part numbers laying in the bottom of it, so that's good. I'm going to go stick this in the oil drain. Now it's just a matter of getting all the old silicone off. So I'm going to go through with the flat carbide scraper and just get all that off. Now we're going to leave the windage tray uh, right in there. The silicone comes right up next to it though. And we're just going to go through and scrape all that off, get it all cleaned up and ready for the new pan. So once that's all cleaned off, I just kind of want to experiment. This is our new pan. It comes with the new plug. I want to see, uh, before we silicone it up, which way it's got to go uh, up in here. You know, how do, we, uh, how do we get it in here without smearing off the silicone? So I kind of just like to test fit them, if you will. So we'll get that in up behind the balancer. And then thunk. And yeah, we should be able to, there's lots of room. If we stick it in, let it kind of scrape up the back this way. Should be okay. The last thing you want to do is get it in there and find out that you know you smudged all your silicone off. It takes a while for this oil to start kind of oozing back out, so we're going to dry this up real good. Now, up on the front of the engine uh, where the oil pump is, they have a groove all the way around where the pickup goes. Make sure you take a little flathead pocket screwdriver and clean all the silicone out of that hole. Uh, and here's the you know the screen for the oil pickup, and then it picks up all the way down here in the bottom of the pan. So I'm going to clean this off with a brake parts cleaner and then a very thin film of Ultra Gray. This is a machine surface, both sides, so don't go gobbing a ton of silicone on this thing. It, it needs very little, actually. So we're going to be using the Permatex, I believe this is Permatex Ultra Gray Max Torque. One of my favorite adhesives, silicones, to use. This and the, I'll tell you the other good stuff, well there's several good ones. Uh, the Toyota FIPG, their form and place gasket's pretty awesome. The Motorcraft gray stuff is fantastic. So we're just going to put a real thin layer all the way around this baby. And then I usually just take my finger and I just spread it around. Like I say, this is going to be very thin. 
just this way here I can make sure I have no gaps there's no uh, you know little air pockets or anything I don't know I guess imperfections in the silicone and I can make sure I cover the whole surface but uh, be be mindful not to go bananas around the oil pickup last thing you want to do is have that jammed right full of silicone and starve the engine of oil and make it explode got a little bit of time, not a ton of time, but a little bit of time here. And this is on a bit of an angle, so this is the only edge that gets a little bit wet. Make sure you have this all 100% prepped, scraped off, and then go over it with some brake clean and a wire brush, you know, just a wire toothbrush. Get all that silicone out of here. It's quite a rough surface, so it should bond quite well. You know, the machine marks on here, I mean, you can drag your finger across them, so it should make for a good bonding surface. Everything looks clean and dry. Let's slip it up in there. Stick a couple bolts in your pocket. And then remember which way you test fit. Spin those up, and then we're going to stick the ones in the transmission there, and we're going to pull it that way just a little bit. And then we're going to go through and just kind of snug these up, then we'll get the actual legit torque process. But we want to make sure that this surface is tight and all our silicone kind of has made its bond. And there, that should hold like that. I'm going to start spinning all these in by hand now. Like I say, just gingerly snug it up and then we'll get the process uh, as far as what, you know, is proper to do, I guess. So all the bolts are in it. The install procedure is pretty straightforward. Uh, it tells you to tighten down all of the oil pan bolts to 18 inch pounds and then torque down these bolts in the tranny and then go back through and tighten these down to 89 inch pounds. So we're just going to go through very lightly snug these because that's, you know, frankly 18 inch pounds is just finger tight. Then we'll go through and we'll snug these ones up and then back through and finish off the oil pan. So I think they only want these lightly tightened so you can still pull it this way if you have to. There are some alignment pins that they sell from the OEM that, you know, helps you in this process, but uh, not really necessary in my opinion. some more and then we'll grab our torque wrench and go around all of these they're not very tight like say 89 inch pounds I think it was and these were like 40 40 something 43 maybe it depended if it was automatic or stick this automatic and they say you have less than 10 minutes once you apply the sealant right. so now I'm pretty feel pretty confident that that Oh, this is a slippery light. Uh, feel pretty confident that we got a good seal on there. We got good, just a little bit of silicone coming out. That oil there, don't worry about that. Trust me, once this all dries, we're gonna be golden. I'm gonna go through and get this all torqued down. 
So one thing you want to do, just look along the edge of that pan, you see the little bit of silicone that hangs out. That's good. And you just kind of want to look all the way around and make sure that you have silicone protruding out. Of course, everything you can see, you can't see the back half. Now that coolant that's leaking down there, this coolant right here, we're fixing that. That's coming out of that upper water housing. But like I say, he's going to do this oil cooler at a separate date because that's leaking. And then of course it's leaking out of the turbo. Well, I bet you dollars the donuts. I bet the inside of the turbo is cracked right now anyways. Let's see if you can, let me see it in there. Yep, so yeah, the turbo's already got a crack in it right on the wastegate. So you guys can see that right there. GM says that is normal. Uh, <laughs> I'm here to tell you once that crack gets a little bit bigger, it's gonna start throwing under boost codes. But uh, really, really common on these. Sometimes these things look like shattered glass on the inside. That, that crack will be all the way across the bottom and it'll crack all the way across the top of the housing over to the uh, actuator or over to the rod that goes through uh, for the wastegate. Um, but yeah, that one's got a pretty, pretty healthy crack in it. Hope you guys can see that, but uh, super common on these cars. And like I say, when he does the turbo, as soon as that turbo finishes uh, itself off, once the turbo's off, then we'll do this whole mess right here, the oil filter housing and uh, cooler and such. But uh, it looks like the oil pan turned out pretty good. Um, I'm pretty happy with it. We just got to get all this junk back up on there. Put both of these on here, both of these nuts. And then I'm not gonna tighten these down until we go up and get the upper clamp put back on the turbo. But we'll get these started here for the time being. And then we'll put the bra brace there. So we'll leave that like that. I'm gonna take this ratchet strap off. We'll get this brace back on underneath here. Eventually, you'll give up on the OEM bolt. You'll replace it with a regular 8125 nut and bolt. And when we do the turbo, that's when we'll buy the new clamp. The new, or the old bolt rather, was just too galled up. The threads on it got frigged up. So I just took that uh, integrated nut off and then replaced it with a standard uh, bolt, which will be totally fine. And like I say, this clamp, the, the sucky part is you can't get these clamps off easily without taking the turbo off because you can't sneak them past the end of the housing without taking this water pipe off it's kind of a silly design you can you can get them up here i've done them before you spread them way apart and you know flip them around and, and pull them out the front but uh, that'll be completely fine for this vehicle We'll throw the heat shield on it. Now underneath, we're gonna leave all the plastic crap off it until tomorrow. I'm gonna let this sit overnight and let that silicone dry or cure, whatever you wanna call it. And then probably not gonna show the process on the valve cover because I think we already have a video on that on a Chevy Sonic uh, from way back when, I think way back when Marie worked here, she did. Uh, one of those and I think showed how to do that. So I'll try to find that video and link that because it was a video that showed the common failure on these uh, when the PCB diaphragm ruptures and creates a lean code. So I think in that video, if I remember correctly, she did a little lessons on her best understanding of fuel trims and shared that with you guys. And then I do believe there was a video on how to replace it. So we're gonna snug this up Snug these up. I'm gonna rerun the wire back up here for our O2 sensor there. 
or AFR, whichever it is. We got to plug in the one underneath. And then like I said, we'll wait till tomorrow to fill it up with oil and then run it and verify uh, that we have no leaks. Um, one thing we've got to do though, or one thing I want to do is I want to fix the coolant leaks and all that stuff before I get the engine all heated up. So we're going to take care of all of those tomorrow and then come back and finish this. These connectors can be a real pain in the neck. There, there's that. Like I said, we're not gonna click that in just yet. We may even have to disconnect it tomorrow to get to what we have to over here. Okay, everything looks good up here. We're gonna leave that off as a gentle reminder for the morning. The rear O2 sensor plugs in right above the CV axle, right there on that little bracket just below the starter. And I think we're good, despite some of the oil and crap that's on stuff. She's gonna smoke a little. And I smudged off some of our perfect bead of silicone with the side of my hand. Uh, not, a, not a big deal, it has nothing to do with how good it seals. So I think we're gonna get it, give it the benefit of the doubt and let it dry overnight or cure whichever it does or whatever it does we'll see you tomorrow here we are the next day uh, other parts and pieces have been put on like I said we didn't do the valve cover uh, video and the cam timing solenoids uh, I also was in my groove so I did a uh, did the water outlet housing too so that baby's all on there that's not too difficult to do remove the air pipes and and such uh, so that's all back together now. The new cam cover's on. Filled it up with oil. It's time to fire it up. It's full of coolant. And uh, of course the uh, PCV hose. So let's fire it up. I feel like I'm doing one of them cold start videos. Of course we put a new uh, oil filter in there also. But when he comes back to do the turbo and the oil cooler, it's gonna need the you know, filter housing gaskets and stuff there too. But this should resolve the majority of this fella's oil leaks uh, for now. Fans running there, must have the uh, defroster on. I took and cleaned off the oil around all the other stuff up here. We'll let her run. We'll go underneath it as it warms up. And we'll make sure that everything's high and dry, make sure our coolant it's high and dry, I blew it all off the top of the tranny there. We should be in good shape. I did put uh, that plastic thing back on. There's gonna be some smoke as she starts burning off here. I think everything looks pretty cool. I'm gonna let it get uh, good and warmed up. shape for the shape we're in folks. I don't see any immediate issues so that's good. Now we can let her uh, warm up. I did double check that drain plug. Probably triple checked it. <laughs> there you have it folks. Uh, replacing the oil pan on your Chevrolet with the big one for uh, not a horribly difficult job to do uh, at the end of the day. If you can leave all that exhaust stuff it is a little fidgety trying to move that bracket. Now if you're from an area where the bolts don't turn to dust, then you can simply unhook the converter or pre-plan for that as I didn't, uh, you know, to get new knots and new gaskets and stuff. But typically, as a general rule, I'll try not to mess with those flanges just because once you touch them, well, now you're buying the whole kit and caboodle. And nobody wants to buy a kit in there or a caboodle, whatever a caboodle is. Uh, anyhow, that comment section, head on down there, do what you do. The Insta and the Facebook, you know where to find us, folks. And just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.